I'm doing this video in English because this is a not a Swedish battery pack. We have a company in Sweden called Bat Bike, but Bike Bat, that must be something else. This is for a battery pack from, this battery pack is from Crystalite Europe. Crystalite is a Chinese manufacturer, uh, maybe with some US operation, but they design engines, not batteries, and Crystalite Europe, I think they sell crappy e-bike kits, most of them with Crystalite motors, and they just add some random battery packs, and this battery pack seems to be added from BikePad. Dot Belgium, I think that is, and uh, these batteries are very common in Sweden for 250 watt e bikes, 36 volts. At least these cases are used. However, the motor he described was uh, for 600 to 1600 watts. So, oh, here is some info. He bought it oh, like one year ago. Uh, when, when this battery was new, he, he was only able to ride 16 kilometers. Just that is like what 16 kilometers. Now it can only ride two to four kilometers. This is really weird. But if you use a battery pack like this, that is not built for high discharge, then maybe 16 kilometers is good. Then I would like to have a temp sensor in here when he rides his e-bike and just gets 16 kilometer because I think it's it will get like super hot in here. So let's see if this battery pack is actually suitable for a crystallite motor. Um, the motor is Crystallite UFO R4540 and here is a picture of it. It's not some kind of wimpy Habas motor, it's real powerful deal. Crystallite hate series, this is what they talk about in Endless Bear and like that. Uh, already here you can see that something is not right. Sure, this kind of uh, on off switch, they are not used for high discharge. If you have a 250 watt e-bike, you can usually use you can usually connect it directly to to here, but if you do doing more watts than that, the contacts in here will melt, have poor conductivity, and a lot will be wasted in heat. So if you're gonna do a high high discharge battery in this kind of case with an on off switch, then you're gonna need a relay switch and your BMS, not pull the power through the poor little poor little sucker over here. And here we have a little look inside the battery packs, and they're using packeting foam just like this oh and here you can see there's cracks in the heat shrink tubing now why is there cracks on the heat shrink tubing if this battery was like 10 years old then maybe the plastic can get uh, cracks in them but but still it's not as flexible as heat shrink tubing anymore because it had been subjected to high heat for a long period of time and then it can crack like this and it hardens it turned from the soft kind of plastic that heat shrink tubing is to a hardened kind of plastic. So let's open this up and see what more we find in here. Well, it was easy pulling out. There were some more plastics in here and also they added a little bit of hot. Didn't know this is silicone. Just added a little bit in here to make his stuff even worse. And here you can see uh, some handwriting and it's totally cracked over here. Totally cracked. And the tape and the shiny cells, oh. Nice, now we're getting somewhere. Away with all the fucking tape. Uh, it's fairly a large BMS with a temp sensor. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. This complete fucking idiots. It's not the first time. It's not the first time I'm seeing this. Here you have the battery minus. Battery minus, and on the BMA it doesn't say battery minus, it says discharge minus. It's hard to tell because there are plates over here, but I can tell it says this minus. And discharging minus goes from the BMS to the discharging minus port, this one. Instead, they connected the battery minus to the discharging port. And here you have B minus, battery minus. It does not go to the battery minus, this one goes to the discharging port, then do you think this BMS could protect uh, the battery cells from over discharge? No, it could not. It does not have this future when you mix up these very important wires. However, on the charging wire, this must be a discharging wire, it says CH minus, it actually goes to the charging port. So, they use crappy shiny cells 
Uh, abundance of stupid adhesives. I don't know if these cells could handle the discharge load. They did not do everything completely wrong. But uh, let's see how these poor cells are doing. So, wanna take a guess on what the voltage is. It's 36.86 volts. So it's not dead. How many wires do we get? We got three, six, nine, ten. So there is no nothing going to the negative line. Okay. 4.1. So we have unbalance. 4.1. Come on. Don't waste my fucking time. 4.1. Yeah, it's it's so fucking twisted this wire, so I can't hold it straight. 4.1. 4.1. Let's go to the next block. Now I'm measuring two blocks. Two blocks are 4.1, so we have a completely dead block in here. 4.1, 4.1, come on, come on, 4.1. And the last negative block is 4.1. So we have a completely dead block in this battery pack, which makes it a useless piece of crap. They are shiny cells, there are nothing I will do with them. Uh, the BMS connected in the wrong way, and I don't know how many watts it for it has. 3, 4 MOSFETs, so it's like a 250W, 350W e-bike BMS, uh, but it has a large cooling plate, so maybe you can get away with 500 watts, but still, we won't be using any of these. If you buy something from BikePath, you're kind of screwed if you did this wrong. This, as a, there's absolutely no reason to connect these ones wrong. And here is the name of the board. It's it's not the poor little board fault that it was connected wrong, but so stupid. 